What is up, Kala Gamers? Welcome back to another Champions Arena video. This one's about the Season 4 patch notes that happened in the morning today. There is marketplace updates, store updates, new champions, a new event, and much, much more. So let's get to it. So to find any information about any Gala Games games whenever there's a patch note update, you just head over to the Discord and you scroll down to the relevant channel. Today we're in Champions Arena announcements. So you see a new post by Toyomi. But before we get into that, make sure to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell. So as you see here, greeting champion coops because of get plucked, all the names of the roles have been changed. So server maintenance is scheduled from upcoming October 4th at 8 a.m. to October 4th, 11 a.m. And the arena season four will begin shortly after the maintenance changes. Starting from this season, there will no longer be a preseason. The next arena season will be immediately after the current one ends. This is an exception as arena season four will start after the server maintenance. So now going forward, there will be no longer be an off season. It's just going to be every season is going to start after the current one ends. And I think this is an awesome change. I didn't really get why there was an off season, but I love this change. Next up, we have event updates. A special login event begins. Ooh, an aura random box will be provided as a special reward. Interesting. I wonder what you get in that. An event begins with a higher chance of summoning Daneshka and Miko. Oh, so I'm guessing these are the two new champions. They've added to premium and normal summons. Nice. They've added to the book as well. Oh, nice. Because when you get the battle pass, he wasn't added to the book. So the new champions have been added both to the pools and the books. An event begins with a higher chance to summon the new champions after maintenance, which is already passed. Because this video is well several hours after the maintenance. During this period, new champions are more likely to appear from the premium summons. Banners with the new champions have been added. Champion pick events is added. Champion pick up events means basically you get a higher pool chance for that champion. And since they've confirmed two, so I'm guessing those two will have a higher chance. Players will get one premium summon to get in the event tab. Nice. So I could test my luck again and maybe get a Daneshka or a Miku. You never know. PvP bonuses champions are changed to the two new champions. So before it was Gia, Safrina, and Lavina, the angel like one, but now they no longer have the bonuses. The 15% VP bonuses is for now Dineshka and Miko. Previous damage champions, there you go, Lavina, Zafina, and Gia. New bonus champions are Dineshka and Miko. Welcome summoner event begins after maintenance of October 11th and before maintenance of October 25th. So that's 14 days, roughly two weeks. Next up, we have the store and trade market updates. Growth packs for the new champions are added for sale. Growth packs for the new champions, Danishka and Miko, are added to the store. What's the difference between the sale and store? Well, I guess it's in sale in the store. Delays occur when items are listed on the trade. Whoa. Delays occur when items are listed on the trade market. When listing a new item, it will be listed after a random time delay. It is to keep in check an act of moving around items, including soul stones using multiple accounts. Okay, I get it that you're trying to prevent people from making new accounts and like trading, but why are you restricting everybody else in the trade and market? Like, isn't blockchain about all the freedom and not being restricted by people and now you're just adding the same thing in Champions Arena? You're adding so many restrictions to the game, it's not even funny. Like, RuneScape did it with the Grand Exchange and the limit between estimated value and their player base dropped. And when they got rid of it with the GE and made it free trade again, the player base increased. You're going down the wrong route, man. You need to get rid of all these like band-aid fixes and address the issue, which is paid gems and free gems. Like stop adding band-aid on top of band-aid on top of band-aid. Just go to the root of the cause. Like I'm not a fan of all these band-aid fixes. That's not a good change. You're basically counteracting the good change, which was up here. All right, champion and battle update. Quick so crit hit rate is increased. Plus, passive play and status effect icon is added. This is the guy on the little donkey or horse, and he's basically rubbish. I'm guessing the crit hit rate is basically making him a crit hit champion. The Freena, the bug is fixed so that level 2 skill ability to grant a random harmful effect is now activated within 3 minions or more summoned minions. I didn't know that was a bug. She's already broken, and now her skill is fixed. Holy shit. Nerdian, new battle bus champion, is added to the book. That's good. Language and localization. The term is changed from curse to reinforcement prohibited in the description of Tower of Trials. I'm guessing that's the debuff that gets applied if you don't meet the criteria. The lower price string is modified and waiting feature is added to the trade market. Purchase tab, main screen, column, lowest price, lowest price including waiting. I don't get what that means. I'm guessing that's the timer that is talked about here, which I hate. 
Descriptions are added for the estate and estate store, which is good. Estate board, all quests reset at daily reset time, even if they are not completed or rewards will not collected. Okay, nice. This is what I thought it would happen, but now they're saying it, that is actually what happens. I think that should be a thing. Like, if you don't collect your rewards in time, I get it if you're sleeping and you're not awake at reset, then you just have to make sure you collect it before you go to sleep or start it before you go to sleep and within a six hour period. Estate store. Once completing a quest on the estate board, a part of the rewards go to the estate storage in the store. Those who have the authority over the estate may sell such items. Nice. This was annoying because basically the Lord and the Vice Lord were setting prices and people that were executives were changing the prices and delisting it and making everything chaos. So now if you can just set it to like the Lord or just the Vice Lord to do things, it's going to be a much smoother transaction. Typos of modified in Spanish version of arena lineup screen. Nice text error. Maximum three is removed from the description of Varnas passive unique status effect. Nice. Other updates. Fix the bug where the text of the skills being used will not display intermediately. Intermediately. I think that's how you say it. Fix sorting criteria in Soulstone tab in interview. Nice. Yeah, well, I'm going to do that and that because some of the changes are just like meh. Champions Arena Season 4 is here. That art does look pretty cool, though. That's Well, yeah, no, this art looks cool. I don't know why you got a down thumbs up there. Okay, server maintenance has been complete. Arena Season 4 has begun, and Dineshka and Miko Pick events have started. Okay, so this is basically the Indian god Ganesh, and this is their champion Miko, but this is basically the god of wealth, prosperity, knowledge. Like, I've got one right here. If I move this over, grab this. Boom. You can't say... You guys can't see. There you go. You can't say that is not a Ganesh. That, that is a spitting representation of that. And this is a Hindu god. But yeah, if I can get him, I'm going to be psyched. Because, you know, it's, it's basically a Hindu god. Okay, so here we are in the game. And as you can see, the new banner is here. So we're going to click here. Don't display it again. And then we're going to go to our estate and check the rates of what the new champions are, what they do, if their skills are good, if you should consider pulling them. So let's head over to our estate, which is best summons, use that estate to support myself and NFT Chuck. So we have Miko and Dineshka. Let's start off with Miko. So Miko is a green mage. He looks like she has fairly decent stats. Condition is star up and moon down. So not bad. Let's head over to her skills. As always, we start with the passives. Inflict speed down on all enemies for two turns at the start of the battle? What the hell? You just pair this with Vera and you get instant CC and then make sure you have a Garbo or a Devi stand in your team and that's permanent frozen CC. Holy shit. Then you just need like another support that gives you three mana on a turn so you can get either growth to guarantee the three CC. What the hell? This is going to be an awesome combo with some teams. At the start of her turn, gain one stack of purifying power and ignores 10% of the skill target resistances for every gain stack of purifying. Gets rid of resistances as well. Decreases speed by 20%. The power suppresses evil. Ignores the resistance of the skill target by 10%. Holy shit. Her first skill deals 135% attack damage. If you card match, has a 75% chance of removing one debuff from the target. Not bad, not a mana champion though. If she was a mana champion, it would be awesome. Next up, Stormcore deals damage proportionate to 70% of attack to all enemies. AoE on the second skill is amazing. Card match increases the duration of the effect of debuff on the targets by one turn. Holy shit. Attack down, buff block, purifying power. Oh my god. What's the third skill? Lightning Core deals damage proportionate to 8% of attack to all enemies and fix attack down for two turns. Card match inflicts damage reduction on the targets for two turns. In fix buff block for two turns if she has error stacks of purifying power i'm guessing like three to five uh something's gonna happen oh it inflicts buff down if she has the stacks of purifying power but the guaranteed attack down if you can't make damage reduction holy shit so she's an aoe damage debuffer and she has speed she's gonna pair so well with vera overall i think she is top tier she can compete with some of the other legendary champions now we go back we go to Dineshka he is a yellow support he has only one star down on moon uh I think you should have buff on star and moon but it's okay let's head over to his skills so his passive is god of benediction as long as Dineshka is in the lotus stance the dodge rate of all allies other than itself is increased by 30 percent 
being hit while in Lotus Stance has a 50% chance of cancelling the stance. Ooh, okay, that's interesting. Lotus Stance increases the dodge rate of all allies by 30%, being hit has a 50% chance of cancelling Lotus Stance. Okay. Normal attack deals 130% attack and gains one mana card match gains. Oh, if you have Dineshka and Mikko on the team with a Vera and then you just have the fourth person be a Garbo or Devi stand, that's going to be a devastating combo. Let's see the other two skills. Barrier of Blessings. Grants a barrier portion to 50% of the attack to an ally and gains one mana. Mana gain on second card. Nice. Increases the target turn gauge by 25%. Okay, so you've got a gauge up. Instead of attack, you've got a barrier. I would prefer an attack buff rather than a barrier, but it's not bad. Next up, we have Lucky Protection Stance, which is his third skill. Change to the Lotus Stance. Gain CC immunity for one turn. Card match gains dodge rate up to all allies for two turns. Lotus Stance, as we described before. Barrier, as we described before, and CC immunity. So he's not as good as Miko, but he can be in the teams if you pair him with, say, like a Veronica, and you're all about barriers and defense. But out of the two champions, I'll be aiming for Miko. Miko has so much utility in so many different um, teams. Let's go to the summon rate. So the summon rate for Dineshka and Miko is 0.065% and everything else is 0.0083. So if you do premium summons, you are highly likely to get these two in the pools. If you get anything else, I guess you can be considered unlucky if you were aiming for Dineshka and Miko because those rate ups are mental. But if you do manage to get a Saphir or even like a Devian Stan, Dimentus, Barbara, which I got a couple of days ago. But yeah, those, those are good. Next, we go over to the normal one, go to the summon stage, and then we have... Oh, it's the same. So they're, they're all the same on the normal one. So you basically want a premium summon if you're trying to pull for these champions. Next up, we head over to the arena. And as you can see, the season ends in 13 days and 7 hours. So it looks like every season... Oh yeah, that's the restart for the season. It's like, why am I silvering? But it looks like every season is now going to be 14 days. So every month you get two seasons. Uh, two chances to get a minting scroll a month. I did not manage to make it in the top 200. I just fell short. I was 220 something. But I think if I get an uh, AOE striker, I'm going to be able to do the top 200 and be able, maybe not top 50, but maybe top 200 to 100, get that one minting scroll, continue to do that for at least four to five months, get enough scrolls to either mint an epic or a legendary, and then make one of my champions a NFT. That is my current plan. I am not competing with the whales because there's no way you're competing with these people to be the higher rank and to farm the gala. So that's all you need to know about the changes and the patch notes that happened today in Champions Arena Season 4. Now, Miko looks amazing as a new champion. If I can, I want to pull her as my AoE because she's got debuffs and AoE. So if I can get a premium summon ticket that they mentioned before, summon a Miko, I'm going to be laughing. But I've used all my luck up on Barbara, so I don't think that's happening anytime soon. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on that bell, and leave a comment to see which one is your favorite new champion. Or do you agree with some of these changes? Don't you like some of these changes? For example, the arena happening every two weeks, I'm on board with that. The trade restrictions and the arena band-aids for the auto battling, I hate that shit. Get rid of the band-aids, tackle the problem at the source, and stop restricting players' game styles and gameplay. I get it, you're scared of people messing up your economy, and since it's Web3 with everything being real money, you guys are trying to limit a lot of things, just stop limiting player interactions and player gameplay let the markets flow let everything be open let it be a free market you're gonna get some bad actors but you're ruining it for everybody else and i hate the new change to the trade market i'm saying that straight up on something on a positive note i will be participating in the last expeditions playtest that happening in a couple of hours after the video goes up so make sure you stay tuned for the live stream to see me battle it out with 20 other content creators, other three will be in my team. I'm getting RNG crypto, yeah I can, and maybe somebody else on my team. As always guys, see you in the next Web3 gaming video, focused on the Gala Games ecosystem of course.